Okay, so I want to take a look now at how we can determine if a function has an inverse, if a function has a function that will undo that function activity. And I want to think about this graphically for a second. The idea is to think about, well, if I look at a graph, how can I tell if it has a function? Or sometimes if it has an inverse, or sometimes we say if it is invertible. And it turns out that, remember, a function is a function, and we can tell that by looking at the vertical line test. right? If it only crosses a vertical line at at most one point, it is a function. It's well defined. Well, to find out if it actually has an inverse, we actually use a horizontal line test and see if for every y value, there's only one x value at most that, in fact, it came from. And here, for example, with the line, you can see it actually passes the horizontal line test. So the line is actually invertible. You can find the inverse of it. I don't know how yet, but we can. Let's take a look at the parabola. It's certainly a function because it passes the vertical line test, only hits at each x value at one y value. But notice it fails the horizontal line test because there are some values of y that come from two different x values. So this inverse will not be a function because for the inverse to be a function, I put in this value and it spits out two different values. So to see if the inverse is a function, we give it we give this curve the horizontal line test. For example, if you take a look at like the, a cubic-like function, here's a cubic-like function, you'll notice it's certainly a function because it passes the vertical line test. But notice that it actually also must have an inverse function because it passes the horizontal line test. It only touch it, it touches at one point. Now, if the thing bended up a little bit like this, then this would fail the horizontal line test because that means that there would be some y values where I wouldn't know how to decode. Would I decode to here? Would I decode to here? I just wouldn't know. I just wouldn't know. So here's an example of a function that does not have an inverse. Here's an example of a function that does have an inverse. Because no matter what y value you give me, there's, it always came from exactly one unique x value, so I can decode. I can decode. I can decode. I can't decode here, because do I decode to here, or do I decode to here? So to see if a function has an inverse, we use the horizontal line test. We want to know, for every y value, can I actually go backwards and find one particular x value that mapped to it? Functions that have that property, that have the property that for each y value, there's only one x value that came from it, we call those kind of functions one-to-one -one functions. So a one-to-one -one function is a function, first of all, so that every x goes to one y, but then conversely, every y came from exactly one x. That's why we call it one-to-one, -one, because one x went to one y, and that one y came from that one x. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence, a correspondence between the points down here with the points over here. Here, this is not a one-to-one -one function, because even though this value of x right here leads to one particular value of y, when you go backwards, that value of y came from two possible x's. This is not a one-to-one -one function. So the functions that can be found an inverse for, so those invertible functions, functions that have inverses, are precisely the one-to-one -one functions, those functions that pass the horizontal line test.